Good morning, my friends. It's your old pal, Jordan the Lion. How are you doing today? Good. Glad to hear it. Well, I took that jalopy of a car of mine out for a ride last night, and it still feels weird, so I'm just, I'm just tired of messing with it, so I talked to the building maintenance man where I live, and he recommended a mechanic that he says he's been taking his car to for years, and that he's reasonable, and, uh, I just want to get it done. You're tired of hearing about it. I'm tired of complaining about it. And I want to get back to life when it was singing birds in the sky and, you know, beautiful sunsets and not worrying about whether that car is going to leave me stranded on the side of the road. So we'll get that done and then I'll figure out a vlog. I have pages of ideas, but until I get that figured out, I don't really want to kind of narrow down what I'm going to do today. But we will do something great today. Thanks for coming and seeing me today. Thanks for going on the journey. Days with Jordan the Lion begins now. All right, well, I just dropped my car off to get repaired. He got the uh, code reading. He's gonna give me a call and let me know what the damage is. At least we'll get it taken care of. I'm happy about that. So now our code that's coming up is saying cylinder misfire. So he's gonna check the cylinder, the coils, and uh, who knows what else, but hopefully that that should solve it. That it sounds exactly like what's going on, so. And I need to go get a shower desperately. I wanted to go get this taken care of first thing so I didn't even have a chance to hop in the shower. Now, if we get this car fixed tomorrow, we are gonna do some considerable vlogging tomorrow. We're gonna do something that we have to drive to, because I'm getting stir crazy not having the option, and there's been a few vlogs I've wanted to do that you just absolutely have to have a car for. All right, you goofball, you ready to go out for a walk? Just got a call from the mechanic. They said that it's a coil. They're gonna replace the coil. Call me in an hour. We should be set. And I know what I wanna to vlog today. I think we're actually gonna take a train downtown to do it. What do you think, Jaw? Let's rock. Let's go. Well, I've decided what we're gonna do for a vlog today. If this looks familiar to you, then you know we're gonna do a filming location from one of the greatest rock and roll movies ever made, featuring and starring the Ramones. Rock and Roll High School. Yep, as we were waiting for a call from the mechanic, I started watching Rock and Roll High School and it got me all inspired to want to do a vlog for that today, so we'll do it. If you've never seen it, it's hilarious. Yeah, this easily goes in my probably top five of all time favorite rock and roll movies along with like Roadie starring Meatloaf, Blondie, and Alice Cooper, and Spinal Tap and stuff like that. I always feel like the best rock and roll movies are always kind of, the campier the better and Rock and Roll High School is totally campy. And there's a great character named, well, for one thing, <laughs> Clint Howard really steals the movie. Ron Howard's brother, absolutely hilarious in this, but then you have the main character, Riff Randall, who wants to and has written a song that she wants the Ramones to record. It's Rock and Roll High School, so the whole purpose to this movie is that their high school has a new principal who thinks rock and roll is turning everybody crazy, and this girl, Riff Randall, knows that the Ramones are coming to town this week, wants to get a ticket and wants to get to meet the Ramones so she can have them record her song, Rock and Roll High School. Now what we're gonna vlog today is actually pretty easy to read from one of the train stops, so that's why we're gonna do it by train. We found a buddy here. I always love this building. Love this. First I didn't get it, and then once I understood it, I started to really appreciate it. Man, it is nutty. We've had a lot of celebrity deaths like this week. We just had Harry Anderson, Barbara Bush, Bruno San Martino. It's been pretty crazy. Somebody somebody else is escaping my mind right now, but it's more than usual. Oh, I think it was Lee Ermey who I was thinking of. Lee Ermey died. If you're an old fan of the Atomic Age movies, you also get a little bit of a treat of having Dick Miller in this movie, who was in Buckets of Blood, and I think he was in Earth vs. the Spider. Also in uh, Demon Knight. So here we just have an abandoned dresser with a pair of swim trunks in it, um, a pan to cook with, some blank CDs, a wine goblet, some plates, yeah, weird, and a scale. <laughs> Interesting. Well, there's our urban explorations for the day. Now, I've actually vlogged this house once before. We're getting ready to cross over here. That at one time was uh, Steve McQueen's house. Right now, I believe what I heard was that Mark Hamill's daughter bought it. Actually, what I think I heard was that Mark Hamill bought it for his daughter, possibly. I think that's what I heard. 
very cool though. Take a look at this, their yard looks like Easter. I just saw this little waterfall off to the side. I figured we'd come over and take a look at it. All right, let's head out and do the vlog. We're gonna walk down to the train station. Now this 1979 cult classic was a Roger Corman venture. And Roger Corman's one of my favorite producers because he'll really make a movie that nobody else will make. And this movie originally started out being called Disco High. They actually reworked the title a few times, reworked the script, and then by the time they were ready to film it, it wasn't a Ramones movie at all. Roger Corman actually wanted Todd Rundgren or Cheap Trick to be the stars of this movie. Their schedules wouldn't permit. And it was actually one of the actors in the movie, Paul Bartles, that recommended the Ramones. Now when I found that out, that pretty much boggled my mind because when you watch the movie, it almost feels like no movie has ever been made more suited for a band than Rock and Roll High School for the Ramones. And believe it or not, this movie was actually a satirical take on a real story. I mean, if you actually look at the plot of the movie, it's almost like Footloose in a way. But this was actually a true story, something that happened in 1920. A group of students were feeling their school was unjustly, telling them they couldn't listen to certain musics and do certain things. So they all did a storm out. Now, if you think that we're going to see the high school, unfortunately we're not. They actually bulldozed that high school during the filming of the movie. That's right. When you see that whole scene where everything's blowing up in the background behind the Ramones, they were gonna level that school anyway, and so they just made that part of the movie where they were blowing up things that actually freaked out a lot of the actors. Now, they did actually film some of the scenes for high school at a school that does still exist. It's the Miracosta High School, and that's the uniforms that they use for the cheerleaders and the football players. So where I decided to take us today is I'm actually going to take us to the Mayan Theater where Riff sets up her lawn chair and waits out in line for three days waiting for those Ramones tickets to go on sale. Now we're going to take this to 7th and Metro. So basically from here down to... head off to find the theater. Now not only is this an amazing movie, but it has one of the best soundtracks of all time as well. All right, I think we want to make a right up here. Take all that in. You see the big neon Jesus save sign up there and then you've got that top of that building that almost looks like a cathedral from Europe. This gothic style top to it. Pretty cool. Alright, you know we're close when you see the parking signs for it, so there we go. Well, there it is. Well, the side of it anyway. We actually need to get to the front. I'm going to show you quite a bit up here actually. Now, if you want to know why it's called the Mayan, just take a look at the front of the building. Isn't that amazing? There's somebody in there, so maybe I can talk him into letting me take a look around. Look at that. What a great building. I'll just show you a little bit of the building here. Now, let me show you how it's changed. Now, the first time we see this in the movie is when with Riff Randall, is waiting right here to buy her tickets. Now, she's actually in between this section right here and at the time, there was a center movie theater type uh, booth that you could buy your tickets right there. So she was actually located right in here with her lawn chair. She had her cardboard cut out of all the band members that she kept kissing. Uh, she was eating her pizza, doing her jumping jacks out here.
and she was waiting, like I said, for three days so that she could buy all the tickets for all of her friends in school to go see the Ramones when they play here. Now, they show her two or three times here, and they show her friend Rambo um, getting her, like, excuses to miss classes while she's sitting here waiting. So then we see, later on in the movie, when the band starts showing up, we actually see the Ramon's number one fan has cut in front of her at the booth, and they're arguing about who's the first in line. Excuse me, but uh, I think it's obvious I'm first in line. Not anymore. When you see her look behind her, there's a line of people going right up along here. They have almost one of those used car lot type um, flag ropeways that everybody's behind. And you see, um, you see Riff see a, and it's something you couldn't get away with in movies now. You see a, an American Indian with a full headdress and everything with a tomahawk. And uh, Riff looks over at the guy beside her and he goes, ah, scalpers you would never see now. So then you actually see the band come riding down this street. Let me show you. Now right here, you actually see the band riding down this street with their, uh, their convertible, and you can see that walkway over their head as they're riding down the street and they're singing the song, I Just Wanna Have Something To Do. So then their car parks right here, and they all start piling out, and the way that you can tell is because this tree, even though it was tiny at the time, you can see those three branches, the way they split, that matches up with when they get out of the car right here, you can see that in the background. And then they're, they're singing the song. The band members that have instruments are walking with the instruments, and you have that, tonight. And they're doing that whole song and Johnny is walking down here. The girls that are on the other side of this rope are like reaching over, touching the guitar, Joey singing to all the girls and everything. And they all keep just walking it down here. Showing the side of the Mayan the whole way down. So I'll be matching it up as we're going through here. You'll be able to see the whole side of the Mayan behind all the kids that are waiting in line. And there would have been a big movie poster right here on the side, well, or a big concert poster that said the Ramones were gonna be here. Now I wonder if you look through those dark windows if I'll be able to tell whether or not that original ticket booth is still in the inside. Let me look. No, I looked inside. It's gone. Completely gone. But isn't this place amazing? Look at all the details to it. I mean, all the way down to the entryway. Yeah, so it's actually right over here. This whole, this whole sidewalk right here is where you see the band walking in to uh, where they, uh, of course, eventually entered the theater over here, and Riff Randall just gets passed right by, by him. And then when the booth was right here, there was kind of a shot of Riff kind of standing right here, and you can see the car over there, and you can see all the fans lined up along here. Man, it's so sad that they changed that. I mean, I guess I get it because of the times and everything, but you think they would have kept that original that original ticket booth in there because when I show it to you and match it up in the movie, you're gonna see it was exactly like all of the, the Mayan decoration out here. So it totally fit the theme. Maybe they moved it inside somewhere. You can see even up here, there's like little totem poles and various things like that going all the way up the side. That's kind of cool in this little hallway. They have old signs for Mayan shows. Isn't that cool? Now obviously because of this truck here, I can't get a real great view of the whole front of the building, but they only flash the, uh, a shot from like the other side of the street showing this only like one time, and it's brief, like we're talking like a second. What a great front though. Now 
Now one of the great things that this theater does, or that I know it for other than the Ramones movie, was this place, I forget how often, it's not every month, but pretty frequently they have Lucha, Luchador wrestling here. And when they're walking down here, this was silver at the time. You can tell that they've repainted it because you can actually see the, the coloring underneath it. But you can actually see that in the shot as well when they're, when they're working their way up here. Now this meter wasn't a meter at the time, it was a, um, it was a loading zone sign. So some things have changed over here since then. And there's a little bit better view of what we're missing out on top. Isn't that a beautiful theater? Just to think that memorable scene would have all happened right here. I love it. I love it. But like I said, this movie is just too good. Just too good to know that they would have done that. <laughs> that whole song walking right up and down this sidewalk. I love it. That's the view they flash for about one second in the movie. Without the truck there. All right, we're gonna head back to Hollywood because my car is done. They replaced the coil and I think that should do it. Great artwork, I love it. Wow, take a look at that one too. That little skeleton over there. That's the equation they don't teach you about in school. Coffee plus bagel equals chicken squared. What? Oh, look who's tagging. Now I did actually try and get in the theater, but uh, every road led me to a dead end and nobody was answering the doorbell when I rang it, so. Unfortunately, we won't get to see the inside, but. Oh my God. I was downtown, look who I ran into, all the way from Sweden, who I met on a little island in Sweden, one of my favorite people ever, Jacqueline. Hi, y'all. We're gonna hang out very soon, she'll be in another vlog. Yes. Wow, that was totally unbelievable. I couldn't believe, I was literally just walking and there's like six girls walking towards me and all of a sudden I see one go, <gasps> And I'm like, I, then I, as I zoom in on her face, you know, I look and I go, oh my God, it's Jacqueline. What are the odds that somebody that I met on an island in Sweden, if you go all the way back to my vlogs in July of 2017, you'll see Jacqueline. Um, she was my dancing partner at Michael's birthday or Michael's wedding. So, so cool to run into her right here. She just got back from Sweden like a couple days ago. So we're gonna get together and hang out very soon. Snack time. All right, let's head back down into the underground. I completely disagree with this. Without even a second thought, I would disagree with that. Check out this little sculpture. It's actually made out of little metal pieces and make it look like hands going across. Check it out up close. All right, our daily trip. All right, the usual. Got some green juice in there that you can't really see in a salad. You say, eh, no fun, but it's actually good for you. All right, I picked up my car, seems okay. Got some mail. Got home and saw this guy. Well, thank you very much, whoever sent this. There's no name attached. There's a few little papers, but no name attached to it. So thank you very much, he loves these. You wanna say thank you, Chief? Is that your thank you? Say thank you. All right, good night, my friends. I wanted to thank Tim Beavers and Jenna Harned for making contributions to my channel. And obviously, I can't use the Ramones music for this vlog because YouTube doesn't allow it. That's why I had to put 84 Nash in. I think it works anyway. I love this movie. If you've never go, if you've never seen it, you don't have to be a Ramones fan to love it. You just have to love comedy. So go out, see Rock and Roll High School. Have a blast. Have a laugh. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Have a great night and goodbye.